we're going to start this section by looking at the properties of materials that are classified as acids, bases, and salts. We're starting here because long before we knew anything about protons and electrons, even atoms, there was a group of materials that all taste sour. And another group that all taste bitter. Along with those that taste salty. Those very same materials that seem to always taste sour were noted to react with certain metals. The ones that tasted bitter tended to react with oils and even sometimes living tissue. An effect of this might be, have you ever gotten bleach on your hand? Did your fingers feel slippery, almost as if you didn't even have any fingerprints anymore? That's a reaction with the oils in your skin between a base and the oil to create a new material that feels very, very slippery. And those salty tasting things, they reacted with each other sometimes, but not always. The uh, sour tasting things that reacted with metals were said to be corrosive. The things that reacted with oils and living tissues were said to be caustic. And so the term corrosive has come to be what it means to react with metals, to be caustic, has come to be the term that means reacting with oils and living tissues. There are another behavior, another property of acids with natural dyes. And these react with natural dyes, both of them acids and bases. And one of those natural dyes was made from lichen. It's known as litmus. You've played with litmus paper in this class and other classes. And acids tend to turn litmus dye red, where the bases tend to turn litmus dye blue. And salts don't do anything. Litmus just stays as it is. So as our chemical understanding grew, we started to be able to attribute the chemical behavior of these materials and explain why they had these properties. One of the first things we looked at was how they act as electrolytes. You've all heard the expression electrolytes, but what are they really? Well, it's simply something is making electricity be conducted in an aqueous solution. And that's just the flow of charge moving one way or another. So as our understanding went to become aware of what matter was made of in terms of charge particles, like the nucleus of an atom being a containing protons with a positive charge and electrons being outside of the nucleus, started to focus in on what makes an acid an acid, what makes a base a base in terms of their chemical behavior. And one of the best definitions for this comes from these two guys. They didn't work together, so that, but they both worked on the same concept and got their names on a definition for acids and bases in the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And remember that we're talking about um, acids over here and bases right here. We're going to stop talking about salts for a little while because we have talked about salts already in this course. So in terms of acid, the Bronsted-Lowry definition said that acids are proton donors to a solution. And that's what they are doing in order to be electrolytic or that's their contribution to a charge to the solution that can be conductive. A base is said to be a proton acceptor. So you can see that it's two sides of the same coin. We've got donors and we've got acceptors, both of a proton. And I've said proton and I've written a hydrogen ion both times. Why have I done that? A hydrogen ion is a proton. Remember, a hydrogen atom is only a proton 
that still has its an electron. Once it's lost the electron, it becomes an ion, it has a charge, and it's simply a proton. There are no neutrons in the nucleus of a hydrogen ion. The Bronsted Lowry profile of an acid and a base didn't include anything for salts. But what they did know is that salts are formed when an acid reacts with a base. And that's usually called a neutralization reaction. Let's look at some examples of reactions that happen. You are probably familiar with hydrochloric acid as you've seen it used in many of our lab assignments this year. If we put some hydrochloric acid on the zinc, we're going to get a reaction where, oh, review moment of the day, what type of reaction is this? We have a compound, that's our acid in solution, and we have an element, that's the metal zinc. Did you say single displacement reaction? Good, because with an element and a compound, we have some exchange going on. The zinc is now paired with the chloride ions, and hydrogen is freed up to be hydrogen gas, and we see the contribution of donating a hydrogen from the compound to the reaction, making this be acidic. An example of a base reaction where its behavior is to accept a hydrogen ion is ammonia. You use it as a cleaner on glass and other materials, and that cleaner is a hydrogen ion or proton acceptor. When we put it in water, it's going to form our familiar friend, the only poly, positive polyatomic ion that we know, by taking a hydrogen right off of the water. It acts as a proton acceptor. If you remember, review moment number two, how do you draw dot diagrams? We have nitrogen with five valence electrons bonding with three hydrogens, each with one electron, and we have this unshared pair sticking out here on top, unshared electron pair. That is the landing spot for a hydrogen ion to come in and be accepted. So the unshared pair is what makes this be a proton acceptor. So the behavior is for this extra hydrogen from somewhere else to come in and find that it is to be accepted right there with completing its octet by accepting two electrons and creating the ammonium ion. We're going to use mostly the bronsted lowry definition, but I want you to know that there's an older definition before there was a greater understanding of protons and electrons. And that definition uh, doesn't sound too different it was a hydrogen donor and the base was where the difference was it was a hydroxide ion donor and we learned that no that's not really what's going on as we saw in the case of ammonia we weren't donating a hydroxide ion we were actually creating one by accepting a hydrogen ion and the third and final definition focuses in on the electron a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor where a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. And again, we saw that in our hydronium or our ammonia to form the ammonium ion. So we had ammonia with an electron pair donating it. Hey, hydrogen ion, come on, proton, join in right here. And so those are our three definitions that are the chemical behavior to explain why these physical properties like tasting sour, reacting with metals and what we call a corrosive material, why bases taste bitter. Have you ever gotten the uh, skin from a pecan or a walnut in your mouth? That's a bitter taste. And those do that because of either being a proton acceptor or an electron pair donor. And those behaviors chemically underlie all those physical properties.